The EPA is ready to clean up a landfill in Missouri which contains radioactive material. It is the Westlake Landfill. It is a Superfund site. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt has journeyed all the way from the swamp to New York City to sit next to me. <laughs> hey, so Steve. welcome to the show. Good it's to great see to you. Have you. Likewise, likewise. Good to now, be with you. This Superfund site, the Westlake place in Missouri, that's been a Superfund site for years and oh, years and forever. years. Discovered in 1970, yeah. listed on the national priority list in 1990, 27 years when I came into this position, the agency still had not made a decision on how to clean it up. Not clean it up. Just make a decision on how to do that. Made it a priority as I came in the position to get that done. We're announcing it today. We're getting accountability. The radioactive material is going to, uh, to be taken away and the people are going to be protected. It was the nuclear material from the Manhattan That's Project, exactly right. World War II. That's exactly right. How long is it going to take you to clean it up? Less than five years. You'll never satisfy Less the Greens. Less than five years. The Greens well, will always say, you, no, no, you're just fluffing this off. What's amazing, amazing about this is it's reflective of something, Stu. Uh, the agency the last several years has used regulatory power to weaponize against certain sectors of our economy as opposed to doing things like this cleaning up a Superfund site in St. Louis, Missouri, taking 27 years to get it done and providing certainty and confidence to the people in that area. So we're getting back to the basics, the core mission of the agency, protecting the health and the environment of our citizens and not allowing the agency to be used in a weaponized way is to the, impact parts of our economy. Is the money already there to clean up this site? Ab in fact, we have a responsible party, in this instance, uh, Republic, that is responsible for cleanup. Okay. Two hundred and thirty six million dollars, less than five years. I've got to ask you about this. Uh, Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Energy, I think that's the correct name. They've closed a refinery and they blame green mandates for their well, for closing the refinery. I think it was the, almost the bankruptcy of the company. Yeah. They are in bankruptcy, actually. It, they are, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And it was because of green mandates. The government says you've got to use this reusable energy. 2006 time frame thereafter, the update in 2007, time, the renewable fuel standard that mandates a certain percentage of our fuel have ethanol and advanced uh, biofuels. There's something called a REN program that you may be aware of, where it's an accounting mechanism, and, and refineries have to pay uh, for those RENs. That's what has driven largely this problem. It's not just PES. This is some, we need REN reform, and something I've talked to Congress about. Uh, we've got to take steps to address this, and, and I think there are many that, that understand that. You'll never get rid of the ethanol requirement. You well, this know, isn't getting you know rid why. of it. <laughs> but this isn't getting rid of the ethanol requirement. This is the accounting mechanism to ensure that we have a certain percentage of our fuel actually has ethanol. So it truly is an enforcement mechanism that is being used in ways that really it wasn't intended. We need to get reform around that. Th these green energy mandates take various forms. All around the country. Are you in a position at the EPA to reform all of them? Not necessarily get rid of all of them, but to rein them in. Well, we can't and we shouldn't because the statute says that we have to take these, we have to do what the statute requires, but we, we set volume obligations every November from conventional to advanced categories like bio-based diesel. Our job should be to take the what? Market and production levels and set volume obligations that are consistent with objective factors, yeah. not set inflated or blue sky type of numbers that create this inflationary pressure on RENs. So you so will rein it in. We are working to do Somehow that. Somehow or other. We are working on that. REN reform is very, very important. Amongst environmentalists, are you the most detested man in America? Well, I don't know. They just, they just don't know me very well. I mean, how, why would they be upset about Superfund in, in St. Louis, Missouri? That's, that's the issue here, Stu. Is, should the agency be used as a weapon because or should it be used to do basic good things like St. Louis, Missouri? I'm in the latter category. If they have a problem with that, that's their problem. You are de-weaponizing. Yeah, that's not going right. to be popular. Yeah. But Scott Pruitt, thanks for joining <laughs> thanks us in, in the great New York City. Good to see you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs>